So in the previous lecture, we converted our application to display a list of jokes instead of just one joke. Our goal for this lecture is to continue with our joke application, but to hide the punchline of our joke and only reveal the punchline when the user clicks a button. By the end of this lecture, you're going to learn how to use the hidden DOM property to hide and show elements. You're going to know the difference between DOM properties and HTML attributes. You're going to know how to perform input property binding with the square bracket syntax, and you're going to know how to perform output event binding with the bracket syntax. So hiding and showing elements. Let me get some space here. We can hide any element by adding an attribute called hidden to the element in HTML. So we could just simply hide our punchline like so. And now if I save and rerun our application, we'll see that the punchline is in fact hidden. So this hidden attribute, this is a core feature of HTML. It's not some functionality provided by Angular. But what we want to achieve is we want to have the effect of adding the hidden property to an element by default and then removing it when the user clicks a button. So to support this, we add the following markup to our p tag. And I'll explain this straight away, but let me add the markup first. So specifically, I added the markup square brackets hidden is equal to true. And now if I rerun the application, you'll see it's working. So a few things to note. So number one, we wrapped our hidden attribute with these square brackets. And we'll go more on that later on. And the second thing to note is we made the attribute equal to true. If we made it equal to false, then we would see the punchline appear again. So if hidden is true, it's hidden. If hidden is false, it's shown. Let me set it to true again. And we say that we have bound the value true to the property called hidden. And this is what we call in Angular input property binding. And it's a very, very important concept in Angular. Before we go any further though, I wanted to discuss the concept of an HTML attribute versus a DOM property. So the distinction between a HTML attribute and a DOM property is important in understanding binding in Angular. HTML is a set of written instructions for how to display a web page. The browser reads the HTML and creates something called a DOM, a document object model. This is the manifestation of all of those HTML instructions in memory. So div would be a DOM object under the div. DOM object would be two other DOM objects, a H4, a heading DOM object, and a, a paragraph tag. DOM object. Changing the HTML doesn't automatically update a web page unless the user refreshes the browser. Changing the DOM, however, instantly updates the web page. The DOM is the HTML in memory of the browser. So updating the DOM updates the instant current version of the browser. So there is mostly a one-to-one -one mapping between the names and values of HTML attributes and their equivalent DOM properties, but not always. The hidden HTML attribute is a good example. It only needs to exist on a HTML element to instruct the browser to hide the element. So if we change this to this hidden is equal to false. Hidden is equal to true, hide the hit element. But confusingly, so does hidden is equal to false. In HTML, we just need to add the hidden attribute to hide an element, what it's equal to has, has no meaning. 
the DOM representation of the hidden attribute is a property which is also called hidden, which if we set it to true, hides the element, and if we set it to false, shows the element. So Angular doesn't manipulate HTML attributes. It manipulates DOM properties because the DOM is what actually gets displayed and manipulating a DOM property means the view gets updated straight away. So when we write hidden wrapped in square brackets, we are manipulating the DOM property and not the HTML attribute. And this is why the above, what we're doing, this is why it's called input property binding and not input attribute binding. So looking back at our use of the hidden property, the target inside the square brackets is the name of the property. So in the example we've got, the target is the hidden DOM property. The text to the right of the equal sign is JavaScript code that gets executed and the resulting value is assigned to the target. So true is just JavaScript code. So if you execute true, you get true. But if this was a function, this function would get executed and whatever this function returned, that would be assigned to the value of the hidden property. So again, we are binding to the DOM property hidden and setting it to true. So the element is in fact hidden. So let's add a property called hide on each joke and set it to true like so. So now that we have a hide property on our jokes, we can just set the hidden input property to joke.hide. And then if we refresh our page, well, nothing will change because we're still hiding all the jokes. But we want to show or hide the punchline when a user clicks a button. So let's add a button with the label tell me to the bottom of each card. So I'm going to add button with a class button button primary. These are Twitter bootstrap classes. So they're just to add some nice visual jazz to our application. So I'm going to give it the name tell me. If I rerun our application, and now we've got a button that's called tell me that's been shown on the bottom of the card. So we want to set joke.hide to false when the user clicks the button and then back to true again when they click the button a second time. To have Angular call some code every time someone clicks on the button, we add some special markup to our button. So I'm going to add it underneath. So we have some new syntax with brackets. The target inside the brackets is an event we want to listen for. We are listening for the click event. Now I want you to be, pay close attention. This is the round brackets, not the square brackets, the round brackets. The text to the right of the equal sign is again some JavaScript, which will be called every time a click event occurs. All that joke.hide is equal to not joke.hide does is it toggles the value of joke.hide. So if it's false, clicking the button will change it to true. If it's true, clicking it will change it to false. So we can just as easily make this expression call a function on our component instead. Perhaps something like this. And we can pass it the joke object, which is the object that we're binding to. And we can just create that function on our component, pass in the joke, and then we just have exactly the same code, but we're going to use it from within a function instead. Now let me, let me stop and restart. Now when the button gets clicked, it calls a toggle function on the joke list component and passes it the joke object the card is bound to. Now when we click the button, we set the hide property to false, which then unhides the element. And clicking it again sets the hide property to true, which hides the element. We call this type of binding in Angular, this type of binding by using the round bracket syntax. We call this output event binding. So now when we click the button, we set the hide property to false, which then unhides and shows the element. 
And then when we click the button again, we set the hide property to true, which hides the element. So in summary, the way to think about these two different ways of binding is in terms of inputs and outputs. With the square brackets, like this, we are binding to an input of an element or a component. So we are binding to an input of the p tag. With the round bracket syntax, we are binding to an output event of a component or an element. So you can only go in with the square brackets or out with the round brackets. This is what we call one-way data binding, since data only flows one way, either into or out of a component. It is possible to simulate two-way data binding in Angular, and we'll cover that in a later section on forms. And next up, we're going to look at using a domain model in our application instead of plain old objects.